Okay, I'm going to go to John 7, if you have your Bibles. All right, John 7, 37. I do hear Bibles. It's so good. Remember, I turned 50 last week. Do you guys remember that? So that, that sucked. That's terrible. Yeah, I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad to be alive. Um, but, yeah, year of Jubilee, thank you, yeah. But, you know, guys, I, I swear I was just 12. I was just running around like a little, little native in Hawaii. I was raised in Hawaii. Just running around barefoot in my parents' backyard. Remember that? Mom, that was just yesterday. <sighs> I'm dealing with it, guys. I'm dealing with it. <laughs> 737. Um, okay. Now, on the last day of the, last day of the, of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty... Let him come to me and drink. I'll have a drink of that. And he says, verse 38, he who, he who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But when he spoke of the spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for the spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Let me read that again. Je well, let me just break it down for you. Jesus says, if you're thirsty, come to me and drink. And then once you come to me and drink, you will have now living waters flowing from you to go out. See what he's saying here? Drink from me. I will fill you so much to overflow that you now will have rivers of living water. And it says again in verse 39, he spoke of the spirit who they would receive. The spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. I got pretty cool news for you. The spirit has been given because Jesus has been glorified since this. So when you receive Jesus, not only do you have hope, he is the hope of glory. You drink from him. You now become a vessel for people to drink from. Does that make sense? This is why we really, we really say this quite a lot. You change atmospheric elements wherever you go. You literally change the atmosphere. Why? Because Jesus is in you. Oh, and if he's in you, he should be overflowing through you that you can walk into Target or Walmart or... The 99 cent store, Lori? <laughs> Whatever. Or the Mexican store, Manny? Maybe. And you, wherever you have set your feet, guess what? Atmospheres change. The cement changes. Things Adjust when you, as a son of God, walk in the authority of heaven and you know who you are. Everywhere you go, boom, it's shaking. It's, I mean, literally, it is. Like, if you could see in the, in the spiritual world, in the spirit, what was happening, you'd be amazed. Has anybody, like, got a glimpse into the supernatural? It's pretty wild. I actually, I'm, I don't, I don't, I, I've seen, I don't love it because it's kind of weird, but it's also very cool. I mean, I've seen angels, and they have freaked me out. First time I saw an angel, and, and they can come in all kinds of ways. I haven't, I don't know if I've seen an angel, like, I'm sure I've entertained angels. The Bible says we've entertained angels. That's why it's got to be, you got to be careful, you know, who you, you're, you know, road rage. You could be road raging against an angel that's on assignment to see if you're, you know. You don't know. The Bible says you entertain angels without knowing. But, so I haven't seen in the, like, a, like a human-looking angel, but for a long time at our house, uh, we would see the angelic um, lights. And in fact, it, they, would be, they would be lights of, they'd be rainbow. 
which could have been Jesus, actually. So the first time it happened, Josh was just a little baby. Now, Josh was the kid who woke up every two hours on the dot till he was about 15, and we had to feed him. <laughs> and it was like we got no sleep when he was a baby, and he just was one of those babies. Like, anybody have one of those babies? And then some of you are like, oh, I have no clue what you're talking about. My baby sleeps eight hours every night. I'm like, oh, good for you. So, 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 so my wife and I would take turns, so we'd get, we'd get four-hour chunks. I mean, for six months, it was, a year, it was like this. Six, so, you'd, so every two hours, so let's say she got the first two hours, she'd go feed him, and then so I would sleep so for four hours, so then on the fourth hour, you know what I mean, I'd get the... So one time, it was my turn to get him. He was young, and we hear him whine, you know, crying. <laughs> he still does that. I just, it's a little lower. I run to his room now. I'm like, what are you doing? Just playing video games. Okay, just keep it down. So this one time, it probably was two in the morning, three in the morning, whatever. And I get up and I'm, you know, stumbling and bumbling, you know, I'm just like, you know, and I turn the corner. It's pitch, it's black. I don't want to turn lights on. Even when we get into his room, we wouldn't turn, we maybe like a little lamp. I come around the corner and just at the end of the hall is this unbelievably bright flash of rainbow colored lights like this. Shoot. And I went, I knew immediately, because you could sense, you can feel the presence of God, the presence of the angels. By the way, I encourage you, to, if, if you want to talk about the supernatural, talk about the angelic and the Holy Spirit, and try to stay away from talking about the demonic. I know some Christians, they just want to talk about the demons. Like, oh, did, you, did, you see, did you hear about this demon that's coming? No, I didn't. I don't care. I want to talk about what God's doing, not what the enemy's doing. What you focus on manifests in your life. So I come around the corner and this thing, poof, this bright light, and I just like, I mean, I, I'm in f just standing there and f just freaking out, what is going on here? So I quickly change him, put my, you know, put my gloves on, you know, because I used to wear, sometimes wear gloves and a mask when I would change his diaper. Any other dad did that? <laughs> wear a mask? I used to wear a mask, gloves. So, some, some mom was like, she's like, oh, big deal. That's your, it's your son's poop. I'm like, it's still poop. doesn't matter whose it is. So that was the first night. I, I, I woke up in the morning. I'm like, dude, I saw, I think I saw angelic movement. She goes, oh, that's weird. So then she saw it the next night. And every other night we would get, we'd get up. It was to the point that I would literally get up and I'd say, God, please, No. I was a bad prayer. I actually repented for that prayer because it was so stark and scary. Like I'd get up and I'd be like, I actually asked him to stop and guess what he did? He stopped. And I felt really bad. Like I said, I had to repent. And then it wasn't for years that we saw another angel. Be careful what you pray. But listen, we, wherever we go, we take the presence of God. How can you be hopeless when you have God's presence in you? Let's look at some more scriptures, shall we? I think we shall. Acts 7.28, right? In him we, what? Live, move, have our being. That means everything Every part of our being is in him, and he's in us, sons of God, daughters of God. The New American Standard says, in him we exist. Okay, so, uh, so with that as a, as a backdrop, I want to I uh, talk about something that is kind of making the rounds on social media. I've been seeing it a lot on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, cessationalism is making a comeback. Do you know what this is? Good. This is a really terrible doctrine, a theology, that, and it's, it's prevalent in the church right now, that signs, wonders, and miracles, supernatural gifts have ceased. Cessationalism, cessationalist, cessation, stopped. They believe that, and that's what they're called, and it's a whole movement. And for some reason, it's making a comeback it's all over social media, all over my feed. It's all over. And I've talked to other people about it. They see the same thing. And I'm starting to wonder, why is it making a comeback? 
And I'm thinking it's making a comeback because God's about to do some incredible things on the earth. And the enemy is partnering with those who walk in unbelief to come against those things to say that's not God. I really pity a believer, quote, that doesn't believe in signs, wonders, and miracles. I saw this one guy. They had a whole conference on it a month ago, a whole conference on cessationalism, a whole conference dedicated to why God doesn't do miracles today, an entire conference. It was, it was down in L.A. It was just like, what is going on here? I saw one of the guys they were interviewing, and they said, well, so, so why do you believe God doesn't do the miraculous anymore today? He goes, well, I'll tell you what. If you read Paul's writing, read in Timothy. By Timothy, this is what he says, by Timothy, we don't hear of any more one, uh, miracles from the apostles. And in fact, Paul tells Timothy, if you have a sore stomach, to drink some wine for medicine. It's obvious to me that if at that point God was still doing miracles, Paul would have just said, Timothy, pray for yourself to be healed. But he didn't. He said, take some medicine. I mean, this was his reasoning. Talk about a stretch. That's moronic. What I want to do is, is I want to encourage you. Actually, signs, wonders, miracles has to happen. Has to happen for a believer. You want, you want some proof? Let's go. Mark 16. These are the last words of Christ. Now, Mark records the last words of Christ. He's the only one in the Gospels that actually, before he ascended, gives a dialogue of what Jesus was saying. Uh, one of, uh, one, I think maybe Luke John might have a couple. He says a couple things before the ascension. But Mark breaks it down pretty cool. Look at this, what Mark says in uh, 16, 14, 16, 14. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at a table, and he, re he reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. It's a big deal, guys. Unbelief's a big deal. Because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So this is the great commission. The, the great commission that God gave his disciples before he ascended to heaven. But that's not the last thing he said, actually. That's not the last thing he commanded the disciples. People think that. Go, Great Commission is a big deal. It is a big deal, and we're doing it. But look at what actually he said, literally the last words he said on earth. Verse 17. Well, verse 16. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be contempt, uh, condemned. Verse 17, these signs will accompany, listen, what does he say? Right before he leaves, these signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will pick up serpents and scorpions, and if they drink and lay deadly poison, it will not hurt them. And the very last words of Jesus is they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And then he ascends to heaven. They will recover. Praying for the sick is not an option. It is a command. Cessationalism is a doctrine perpetrated by powerless Christians who are, uh, who are committing themselves because of their experience, lack of seeing miracles. They're saying, obviously miracles don't happen today because I'm not seeing it in my life. Maybe you're not seeing it in your life because you don't realize the authority you have in Christ. I haven't seen any sick healed. How many have you prayed for? Well, one or two. Keep praying. In fact, don't pray for the sick, heal the sick, right? Jesus didn't say pray for the sick. He said heal the sick. So maybe that's part of it. You're praying for the sick. God, if your will be done, heal this person. His will is to heal. Ooh, that rhymed kind of. The way I said it, will is to heal. T-shirt, his will is to heal. His will is to heal. T-shirt, hashtag, I just coined it. Okay. <laughs> 
We must reject with every fiber in our being the doctrine that says there are no signs and wonders. They wrongly believe that. Why? Because it's a theology based in powerless Christianity. To say that God doesn't operate in the miraculous today is to believe a gospel void of power and substance and is to believe a false version of the gospel. Signs, wonders, miracles are not the exception to the rule. They are literally the rule of heaven. Even demons have more faith than some Christians. Demons understand the power of sons and daughters of God. When, when, when you are carrying Jesus and you encounter a demonic person, I'm telling you, they, they flee. The person flees. I was talking to somebody out here a few months, uh, a year ago, and, and I know this person's completely demonized. I mean, just they're, I, mean I just know because I know their story, and they're just living with demons, and and um, we're, they, had, they visited the church because they'd come every once in a while. And then we're out there, and I started talking about the, the Holy Spirit and God and about kind of the situation this person was in and kind of saying, hey, God wants you to be right. And this, and this, and this person starts to just manifest right there, and the eyes go and can't look in my face. And, starting to, and I said, oh, I don't want to cast a demon out today. I didn't feel like God told me to. Because I, th- sometimes, and this is not a demon, demon sermon, I don't like talking about them, but I will say this, and I learned this from my buddy Gershom, too. Sometimes demons, they actually like the attention, and they want you to call them out because you're distracting from what God's doing. And so in that situation, I'm out on the floor, and I'm like, well, we can cast this out now, or I can go home and watch football. <laughs> what do you want to do, God? He's like, don't, don't do anything. Don't touch it. It won't do anything anyway. Because first of all, the person wants to be free. Because if you cast out a demon from a person that wants, doesn't want to be free, they're in big trouble. Because then they're, the demonic's coming back, I think it's a sevenfold. Anyway, enough about demons. <laughs> I'm going to end real, with this real quick. I just want to tell some stories about what God has done. You, because you cannot, you cannot argue against a testimony. You cannot come... Like, if I have a testimony of, of, of the miraculous, and you say, well, God doesn't work th- anymore in, in the miraculous, I say, well, I mean, I'm a living testimony that he does. And I'll say this to this group of cessationists. They will say this. They will say, well, God can do what he wants in a corporate setting. If God wants to heal, he can heal. It's just not what he normally does. It's not... It's not they even say that it's not really how Jesus... It wasn't normal how Jesus operated. I mean, like, do you even read the Bible? Like, seriously. And so he can do it, but he doesn't do it through a man, which is weird because they believe that the, that the, last, the death of the last apostle was the death of signs and wonders. So they're literally saying God doesn't do it in man today, but he did it in man back then. So if you're saying the gifts died with the last apostle, you're actually putting more faith in the man than you are in God. So you're saying God can't use men today? He can only use men back then because they were so spiritual. Give me a break. <laughs> so you cannot argue the testimony of, of Jesus. You can tell me all you want. I had a guy do this uh, when I was uh, years ago when I was on Twitter and I was uh, talking about my dad being raised from the dead. And, uh, and he was like, oh, yeah, well, he wasn't actually dead because they were working on him for 60 minutes. So I'm like, dude. You can believe anything you want. Literally, you can't argue this testimony. He had no heartbeat for 60 minutes. Doctors said he was clinically dead. It was an absolute miracle that he is alive and that he's not brain dead, you moron. You can argue all you want, but it doesn't hold water with me. In fact, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue stupidity. Never debate the demonic. It doesn't matter. Now, oh, can Christians be led by... The demonic? Well, didn't Jesus look in Peter's face and say, get thee behind me, Satan? You can't argue that. You can't say the blind don't get healed anymore. When we had a guy in our church, Greg, who now lives in, who lives in uh, California now, who literally one service got, was blind in one eye and now can see, doesn't wear the eye patch anymore. You can't argue that. You cannot argue the supernatural. 
Didn't you almost die? Or, were, 46 minutes, you were dead too, right? And there's a story about Zach prayed, was he over the phone or something? And then all of a sudden, the story, you like <sighs> breathe life. Nobody. Can, so what are you going to do? Somebody comes and say, wow, that's fake. Nothing happened. You just say, yeah, great. See ya. You cannot argue. This is, what I, this is why it's so dumb. So this is actually a doctrine of demons because it is making Jesus powerless. Don't buy into it. Now, these are our brothers and sisters. But I'm telling you, watch this movement that's trying to come up right now. Don't buy into it. Well, if you're at the wrong church, if you believe that anyway, because you'll just probably get healed if you believe that here. I would say, and I think, you know, my, my staff and intercessors, I think I'm, do you believe with this statement that I think more, the, we see more healed here than not healed. Is, is, would you agree with that? Yeah. Like I would say, if there's 100 people that we're praying for, at least 51 are healed. Don't you think? It's kind of, it's kind of a, it's more rare for us to see people not healed than healed. And so I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that Jesus is still in the business of healing. I mean, I, I had, um, when I was 20, in my 20s, I, I was living in Seattle. Then I went in to, uh, to preach back home it, in Hilo, Hawaii, remember? I came out, yes, flew me out. I did some crusades. I was a young guy, young, young, cocky evangelist. You know, I didn't really know anything. But I just knew who God was, and I just was preaching my, my guts out. I was preaching. I was preaching hard. And uh, I all of a sudden got really, really sick. And uh, I was, as I, even as I was flying back to Seattle on the plane, I was just like, I was so sick. I was still witnessing to the gal next to me. But I couldn't even, like, oh. Uh, I, I got to the, uh, we landed. I told the guys picking me up. I said, I got to go to the hospital right now. Went to the hospital. I was bleeding internally for some reason. And I was just, I mean, it was just blood coming out everywhere from my insides to the outside, if you know what I mean. And um, doctors at first were like, oh, I'm sure it's no big deal. You're young and you're healthy. And every day, it just, it didn't get better. And by the third day, the doctor comes in. I was in so much pain. The doctor comes in and says, I don't know. We got to have to check you for a disease if this doesn't clear up by tomorrow. Because this is, this should have been cleared up by now. So I, I hear, you hear disease. I start freaking out. I'm lying in bed. And, um, it was cool because Carly had uh, people from our church come, and um, I think we were just we weren't married; we were dating. And anyway, they came, and about ten people came and surrounded my bed, and they we were holding hands, and they started praying for me, and I and I started weeping. I said, "God, I remembered the story of the woman with the issue of blood because that's what I was having." And I said, God, if I could just touch the hem of your garment, I know I'll be healed. And so as, I, as they prayed over me, I began to weep. And I reached out, you know, in my mind, in my spirit, and I touched him. And I could feel the shift. And I knew that day I was healed. I woke up the next morning, and I had stopped bleeding. And it was an absolute miracle. Jesus does miracles today. I would be really a bad preacher if I didn't give the opportunity for you today to be healed of something. So if you need healing, I want you to stand up and we're going to release the presence of God that heals.